Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kaylee Hoy. I want to welcome you to Northminster along with Reverend Ross and Anne. 
Um, it's good to see you all this morning. We're so glad that you are here in worship, and those of you who are streaming online, we're glad you are here as well. If you have read John 9 or want to read a really cool story, John 9 is about a blind man, and Jesus uh, reveals himself in kind of a covert way where he approaches the blind man, spits in some mud, and, and smears it on the guy's eyes, and then the and then the man can see, and they're trying to figure out who Jesus is, and that's what we're doing here this morning. We know and love Jesus, but we're here together to learn more about him and his love for us. So thank you for being here. We're so glad you're here, and we hope that you stick around afterwards. and begin our worship service this morning. I'm so happy to see all of you. This is the Lord's Day, and we gather here together. We remember who we are and whose we are. In Christ's spirit, we are refreshed in grace to be refreshing to others with hope. Welcome. Will you please join me as we say responsibly our call to worship? Happy are those whose sin is forgiven and in whose spirit there is no decease. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go as you trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Shout for joy. Let us worship God. Now, please pray with me our unison prayer. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of your every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall surrender into your hands the tasks which you have committed to us. Forgive us our sins and set us aright by your mercy to live lives that reflect your righteousness. So may we worship you not with our lips only at this hour, but in the word and deed of all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray as we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and sweetly forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, in the glory of God. Amen. <coughs>
before you sit down, please turn and even cross the aisles and say good morning to one another. Share the peace of Christ. And a quick good morning and hello to all of you who are joining us online. Welcome. We hope the service is a blessing to you. Please check in with your chat host if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us in worship. Talking to each other. You caught me. I'm Andy Ross, and along with Kaylee and Ann and our choir, we want to welcome you to worship. It's so good that we're together. Uh, my goodness. And can you believe June is almost run out? I, yeah, okay. Uh, if you are here for the first time today, a huge welcome from me and all of us as a first-time guest. If you have any questions about our church or campus, ask any one of the nice people you're near, and they will be happy to help you and show you around. In fact, as a newcomer, uh, we have a gift for you right through these doors at a little welcome kiosk. And we are having a quick walk around tour today at that kiosk. If any of you, not just newcomers, would like to get a quick whereabouts on our church campus and learn a little bit about Northminster. Um, I want to encourage all of you, it's a weekly drill. This card in your bulletin, and we also have a digital one, if you take a picture of the QR code, um, is a check-in little card. Uh, if you could all just write your name, not someone else's name, write your name and uh, the date and check 945. At the end of the service, this is the don't forget, on your way out by any of our doorways, we have little drop boxes. Uh, we'd love to know that you were with us, uh, especially if you're a first time guest. Uh, if you have any questions about ministries or getting involved, you can use this card, multi-use, or on the other side, if you have a prayer request or an answer to prayer, our ministry staff team, uh, we read and pray through these Monday and Tuesday of the following week. And it's a great insight for us on how you're doing, how we can be joining with you in prayer or helping if we can. So thank you for doing this. I do hope all of you can stick around after worship today out here in our outdoor shaded courtyard. Uh, we have some refreshments and it's a great chance to visit with one another. Really enjoy Christian fellowship. And always be on the lookout for people you don't know. Pull out that extrovert stripe in you and introduce yourself. Learn someone's name. That's how we're a friendly church for those who are newish among us. So uh, hope to see you after worship out here. There is a cookie for you. And I've got a, a word about cookies in a moment. Um, we have some free books for pickup and ownership out in our courtyard. Carol and Marie, our, our librarians, have gone through our library. They're calling out some of the books. And there's all kinds of volumes of interesting topics. Feel free to walk by and take one or more books for your reading and keeping. Uh, thank you for that. It's out in the courtyard. This Wednesday night, Marshall and I are inviting you to our movie night. We're going to get back to those over in the building here by the sports court. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to have popcorn, and we're going to watch The Passion of the Christ. Powerful movie. It's rated R. Please use discretion. But we'll have a chance to watch that together and then have a brief chat uh, afterwards. We'd love to see you there. Um, Vacation Bible School food truck is rolling up. Tuesday. It's this week, but keep in mind, it's Tuesday to Saturday, and we're going to think about how God provides for us uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ. We're going to have so much fun. Um, please, this is my request for every one of you, will you please remember to pray every day for Vacation Bible School this week? We need those prayers. Uh, pray uh, for safety among all of us in this operation. Pray that God's Spirit speaks to the children's and the families who are involved and especially helps and inspires those of us who are helping and serving. It's going to be an exciting week. Please be in prayer 
Uh, thank you so much for that. And thank you, by the way, for the, how you've contributed to snacks and implements of joy and fun. Uh, and uh, today is Transformation Day. If you are able to stick around and help decorate our campus, put the last pieces up like that thing, uh, we would really appreciate it if you have some time after worship today to uh, get our campus turned completely into a food truck. And we, we really do have a few spaces left, so it's not too late to register your child or grandchildren or to talk to your neighbors about that. We would love to have a full, a full gamut. Uh, so um, please pass that along. Um, lastly, I think I just wanna say uh, cookies, right? Um, we uh, need your help with cookies. It's very, I, now I know I have your attention. Um, over in our fellowship hall in the freezer, and I think somewhere out in the courtyard, uh, you can pick up a tub of uncooked dough. There's instructions in it. You take it home, you bake the dough and turn them into cookies. Here's the key part. You bring them back to church. It's the part I struggle with. Uh, or if you can just stop and pick up some store-made cookies, we could use some summer help with our cookies for our lively fellowship time. Uh, we would appreciate that. So, uh, and if you get them out of the freezer, make sure you close the freezer door. We had an issue with that this last week. Um, okay, so cookies. Uh, yeah, I think um, the last thing is I just want to encourage you to stay connected with us at Northminster Church. Uh, our social media sites are all there. Uh, you, and if you're not receiving our email weekly newsletter, please write me a note. Um, we would love to get you subscribed. Sheila sends out a newsletter full of information uh, every Thursday evening. And it's a great way to stay in touch. Um, it's so good that we're here. Let us seek God's peace. And let us offer our praise together as we continue in worship.
My goodness, so beautiful. Goosebumps. <laughs> uh, bow with me um, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, knowing that you know all, see all, and love all. We thank you for the opportunity to worship this morning. We know that is a gift that is not um, given to all people in all countries. And so we thank you for the opportunity to be together as a community, worshiping you. We ask that you be with those who are in need, Lord, who are struggling, who have heavy hearts, who are grieving, God, who are questioning. We ask that you be with them. Help them to seek you. Help us to seek you even in our triumphs, Lord, and give you the glory. Open and soften our hearts, God, to the message you would have us uh, here today. Speak through the music and through the words. Speak directly to our hearts. Help us to understand your story better and your vision for us. Help us to see ourselves and others through your eyes, God. Help us to love others like Jesus has loved us. Be with us now as we worship God, and in Jesus' name, amen. as an expression of our thanks. Part of our generosity comes from an understanding of how God has blessed us and uh, guided and provided for us. And so uh, today I'm thinking about Vacation Bible School and I'm very thankful. Uh, I think we have about 70 workers, men and women and some youth, who have said, yes, I will help with VBS this week. So uh, I'd like to ask, uh, when you sit down, if any of you will be assisting or helping with Vacation Bible School this week, would you please remain standing? Because we'd like to pray for you, your work this week, as well as we pray for our offerings. So all of you be seated, except for those who are VBS helpers. Wonderful. Thank you, friends. Gracious God, we thank you for how you provide for us. Even, Lord, as we begin to experience rains and water in the desert, Lord, we thank you for uh, our abilities to get by, how you give us the gifts of family, loved ones, uh, work and income and blessings. And Lord, today we just thank you for these sisters and brothers standing in our midst. Their willingness to say yes and to be here each day this week to care for our kids, to share stories, to lead singing, to help with crafts, to help with snacks, and Lord, to be a joyful presence and witness of your peace and love. So Lord, we pray for these servants. Bless and inspire them in this coming week, especially God in those days when it's really hard or they're really tired, uh, that they will find strength and renewal in you. 
Lord, bless our Vacation Bible School this week, that it would be an offering of your witness and love. And Lord, bless these offerings and gifts now. As we return them back to you, use these offerings for your work in this church, in our community and neighborhood, and in our world. Jesus, in your name, we do give thanks and rejoice and pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, choir. What an inspiring prayer. Thank you so much. And thanks to Dusty and David for you both uh, helping out and filling in. Just beautiful. Any of you wear glasses? Okay. Any of you wear contacts like me? Yeah. Any of you need readers? You know? Yeah, okay, that's presbyopia is what that is. Right. Um, I wear glasses all the time since the fourth grade. Uh, and when I'm not wearing glasses, I'm wearing uh, super contacts. They're about that thick, and they can help me see. Today, uh, we are continuing in our summer worship series, Habits of the Heart. And I bring up glasses and vision correction uh, because you need to uh, check your vision daily. And if you need vision correction, clean those glasses, uh, take care of those contacts. Today's habit uh, in our summer series of thinking about habits of regular life renewal, today's habit is about the habit of fresh eyes or clear vision. It's about how we look at life really and spiritually with all the obstacles we face. And so uh, our vision correction begins as we turn to Scripture, God's Word. John Calvin, the great theologian and great-great-grandfather of Presbyterian Reformed Protestant Christians, he referred to the reading of God's Word as putting on the spectacles of Scripture. God's Word helps us to see, see God, understand life, and go forward in new ways. So let's put on our glasses. If you brought your Bibles, we also have our projected Scripture. Uh, we are today exploring 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, Paul's teaching, and we pick up his teaching at verse 16. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, uh, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this reading of your holy word. Help us now, Heavenly Father. Help me with my words. Help us in our listening and reflections, Lord, to hear your voice and to respond in faith. Amen. I think it can be kind of funny how we see life sometimes, how we are confronted with optical illusions. I've always found it entertaining to see someone with their first new pair of bifocals stepping up to a curb. It's always a little bit of a drum major move, you know, right? And, uh, and actually, there aren't really a lot of jokes about eyesight. The jokes are getting cornea and cornea. I once did a wedding for an optometrist and his bride. And in the ceremony, I asked the bride, do you take this man for better or for worse? Okay, now, for better or worse? How about now? Better or worse? Regarding is seeing. 
The Apostle Paul is wanting to give us clear vision regarding our life in Christ. And uh, in our reading, he's speaking to the church in Corinth. And he's talking about seeing and relating because I think Paul was seen by some in the church in Corinth as not being true to his word because of some previous changed travel plans. Some viewed him in the church as all talk and no action. And some in the church in Corinth uh, wondered if Paul was to be trusted, if he truly was an apostle. Just before our reading in 2 Corinthians 5, Paul's temper creeps out a little bit when he makes mention of those in Corinth who seem to put more emphasis on the outward appearance rather than on what matters in character. But in our passage today, Paul takes this higher view and he comments. He says, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. You see the word regard there? That relates to how we see others. I like this version. Because of this decision... We don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong. As you know, we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. How are you looking at life? How do we look at other people? Because it matters. And it matters for the hope of spiritual change. And it all has to do with how you see Jesus working through you and your understanding. I'd like to suggest today that there are two distortions in our vision which we should seek to avoid. One can be thought of as hiding shades, right? This represents the way we refuse to see or acknowledge issues in society or injustices that we're facing. Or worse, we can't see our own inability to see. Sometimes this comes up in a business strategy meeting. Someone will say, well, you don't, you know, we don't know what we don't know. Brilliant. In the Gospel of John, chapter 9, there's a wonderful story of Jesus giving sight to a man born blind. Kaylee mentioned it. Jesus gives sight to him, and his healing is investigated by all the experts. But the experts can only see how Jesus is a perceived threat to them, a threat to their social order. And so Jesus ends up in that story confronting the experts by saying, now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. You see, sometimes our overconfident claim to see what we only want to see is really an inability to see. The second distortion we should seek to avoid is magnifying challenges, uh, holding that magnifying glass up to only one aspect or another of a complicated concern. And when we do that, we can miss the complexity or multiple dynamics of what society is facing or what someone is going through. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, there's a scene in which Jesus asks, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, but pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Remove your plank first in order to see clearly. So are we able to see a bigger picture when we complain or criticize or especially when we're tempted to judge, when we notice one particular problem in one person or the other, are we failing to see that we might have plankopia in our own eyes? Paul gives us today two much better lenses, two lenses that I think are clear and vision correcting for us in Christ. And they, both lenses are framed in Jesus. Do you get that framed? 
in Jesus. And it's because Jesus, for Paul, changed his way of seeing. You might remember the story. Paul was on his way on the Damascus Road, and Jesus stopped him in his tracks. Why are you persecuting me? Paul had been seeing and acting with a pharisaical rage against Christians, persecuting them. And so Jesus stops Paul on the road, in fact, speaks to him and prevents him from seeing so that later his sight would be restored and he would see and know who Jesus is. It's because of that experience, I think, that Paul teaches us about two new ways of seeing ourselves and our world today, two lenses or outlooks of renewing life. And, and, uh, and both of these lenses in our scripture are introduced with the word therefore. I've said this before, friends. If you're a Bible reader and you see the word therefore, you should always stop and ask what it's there for. They're key. It's a key word. And so the first lens of vision correction is this. See yourself as becoming new in Christ. It's a Bible promise that is wonderful. When you entrust your life uh, for eternity and for today in Jesus, you are responding to how God has been prompting you. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. When you entrust your faith to Jesus, you become growing in a new identity that is from Jesus. You know, we can live with a default vision of not seeing who we are becoming. That's why Paul is clear. I like the J.B. Phillips version of this. If a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. So Paul is describing rebirth here. And it's one that promises everlasting salvation, but it also speaks to the Spirit working in you now, before we die. Entrusting your lives to God, there begins this rebuilding, restoration work of the Spirit in each of us that will ultimately be fulfilled in Christ, and it restores our relationship with God that started way back in creation. Friends, you are becoming new in Jesus with each day, and it's not so much up to you as it is in you and for you. That's good news. What it takes from us is that personal decision, that step of faith. And with that faith, the Holy Spirit comes in and guides and grows us through life. And Paul says, all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This is a work of God in the world, in us. God radically broke into human history in the incarnation, birth, and embodiment of his son in human form. And that happened to reconcile us back to God, to repair the rebellion we could never fix on our own. Elsewhere in Ephesians, Paul would say, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So at the core of this, it's a work of grace in us through Christ. And that leads us to Paul's second lens of renewing outlook. The second lens is, see yourself as an ambassador of Christ every day. It's our second lens of seeing who we are in this world. It's, re it's a remarkable way of, say, of seeing. Paul says, we are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
When you're reconciled to God, it means now, through Jesus, we're good. Do you ever say that to someone after a tussle or an argument? You say, hey, are we good? Well, being reconciled means we are good with God because of Jesus. And that goodness now is transferred through us to others. It's this goodness that we are to offer as ambassadors. In the message version, Paul says, we're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How's your outlook these days? Do you see yourself as being made good with God? Do you see yourself as Jesus' representative? You are Jesus' rep. God wants to employ you uh, for his work in this world. You know, sometimes as a pastor, people make little jokes to me because I work for God. And usually what I hear is something in the Southwest like, well, Andy, I know you've got connections with upstairs. Something like that. And then they'll say, can you do something about this drought? Can you make it rain? And it's usually then that I reply, you know, well, I'm in sales, not management. <laughs> but the truth is, we all are employed by God. We're all in sales. We all are in the good news work of sharing the hope of God's peace with those in our lives. Friends, living as an ambassador of Jesus, let's explore this for a moment. It means you are a lifesaver in your own unique ways for those of us in a strange land. What does it mean to see yourself as an ambassador? Firstly, it means you live under empowering authorization. This means you and I live now with a holy assignment. We've got special orders for why we are here now. And we can offer the renewal of Christ's peace to those in our lives. Jesus' very last words in the Gospel of Matthew state this quite clearly. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That was not a hint. That was not a suggestion. It was an imperative, a command from Jesus for us. Paul says it this way in our scripture. Christ's love compels us, he says, because we are convinced that one died for all. And that word compelled is a word that connotes being gripped by love. The Greek word suneko means to hold something in a way in which it will never come apart. Friends, we are compelled by God to reach out to others with that embrace of saving love. Secondly, as an ambassador, it means you are a citizen representative of another land. God's kingdom. You know, some of you know my background. Some of you know I came from a strange and exotic land called Ohio. You should visit. It's a, be it's a place of beautiful people, beautiful trees, buckeyes, constant overcast clouds. In Ohio, uh, our people, we celebrate these things called jello molds, which we call salads. And in Ohio, there's a special kind of mayonnaise, the best kind. It's called Miracle Whip. Oh. And often, if people want to see the heartland of America, you go to the Midwest. Well, let me say quite seriously today, as an ambassador of Christ, the real heartland we need to speak and show is the promised land 
of our Lord and Savior. It's like that old gospel song, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through, my treasures are laid up. Right. That means this current situation, our lives on this earthly side of heaven, is not our main gig. It's not our only canvas for how we paint and operate. Your real home and promised land of abiding peace is with God and it's guaranteed to us through Jesus our Savior. And so today you and I live as representatives of another land, God's kingdom. Paul says it's as though God is making his appeal through us. You know, I can be a representative of Ohio. I can. I grew up there. I'm from there. I love there. But I would rather talk to you about my best home, my future home, where we can experience joy and healing and revived life together in Jesus. When you place your trust in Jesus, you become a citizen traveler representative of Jesus for others. You're under authorization and empowerment. You're a representative of God's kingdom. Thirdly, friends, as an ambassador, you offer refuge and asylum for those who are hurting. You know, I've been told if ever you're a stranger in a strange land and you have a traveling crisis, like you lose your passport, you should go to your home embassy. Go to your ambassador for help. Well, friends, welcome to God's embassy on Fort Lowell and Tucson Boulevard. And we need to pray that people will come here and find us who will pray with and for them. We need to pray that people will come here to this embassy And discover the Holy Spirit of God's presence in worship. We need to pray that people will come here and be able to receive food, clothing, real help. We need to pray that people will come here and realize they're not completely alone. And we celebrate those who come from around the city to be a part of our community here. In fact, those who come from Africa, the Middle East, and other parts of the world. Our prayer is that people will come here and find Jesus. And that's because you and I, together in faith and by grace, we are the body of Jesus here. We should speak for Christ's hope and offer the message of reconciliation. This is why Paul stressed. He says, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Fourthly, lastly, as ambassadors... You should see yourself as chosen and blessed with divine giftedness. You know, ambassadors in the political world are known for their tact or diplomacy, their courtesy, their ability to work in different cultures. Same with us. The Holy Spirit gifts each of us very uniquely with diverse abilities and talents so that we can care for people in a variety of ways. This means, firstly, friends, we should not bludgeon people with our faith or bludgeon people with the gospel. I like this story of a man who one night got onto a city bus. He was uh, that night uh, more than just a little intoxicated. He got onto the bus, kind of wobbled his way down the aisle, and sat down next to an elderly woman who was clutching her Bible. She looked him up one side and down the other. And he turned to her with quite perfumed breath and said, do you have any idea where this is going? She looked at him and said, well, I've got news for you, mister. You are going straight to hell. And with that, the man jumped up and shouted, oh, no, I'm on the wrong bus again. I'm not supposed to be traveling with you. Sounds like the choir got it later. Okay. (laughs) All right. Um, We should never bludgeon people with our faith or the gospel. But we also should not keep it a secret either. I believe every day, 
Every day we should wake up and hoist the flag of the kingdom of Christ in how we act, the pathways we choose, and how we speak words of healing hope. Paul says, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. In Christ, we put away our labels and see each person as someone for whom Jesus died to offer life. And so how do you need a vision check today? How do you need to clean the lenses of how you're looking at life? I have to tell you, every day I put on or in corrected lenses. If I did not do that as a morning daily habit, I would be walking into walls. Guaranteed. But let us every day seek to put on the lenses of who we are now in Jesus and of the mission of ambassador work that Jesus gives us. Here is fresh vision for you. Paul says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Do you see that star? Another way you could translate that is, God made him who had no sin to be a sin offering for us. So that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Think of that. God made his son who knew no sin to be an offering of sin so that we might live and find life in him. How do you need every day to put on these new lenses of grace and truth? Friends, we need to take off the hiding shades of those issues and challenges that seem too hard, or issues or injustices that are not right, but we don't want to look at them or acknowledge them. We also need to be very careful with our magnifying glasses where we only focus on one facet of the topic or the other, and we're not willing to engage the whole issue. You know, this past week has been an emotional week in our country. We've had emotions in all directions this week, and I would say in these last three years with the pandemic, social issues, and ills. It's been challenging. But friends, can we commit, even though it's hard, to continue to speak and address one another with the gentleness, the wisdom, and the graciousness of God and His Word? Can we relate for those who are upset with listening? Can we offer pieces of insight that we think we have? And can we work with each other in the church and with those in our community so that we truly are serving as an embassy of peace, truth, and God's goodness? Years ago, a friend of mine told me a story of a Presbyterian pastor he knew who did an extensive tour in India. And the Presbyterian pastor was quite struck by the caste social system in India, the different levels of how people live and exist and how they are viewed in the broader community. At one point, the pastor, Gary, had a chance to walk through the villages of the untouchables, those in India who are of the very lowest, uh, poorest class. And he said it was all he could do to keep walking through this one untouchable neighborhood because of the stench from the open sewage in that place. Extreme poverty. But then suddenly the pastor turned a corner into an untouchable neighborhood where almost everyone was Christian, and he couldn't believe it. He suddenly, he says, there were flowers everywhere, beautiful flowers in the homes and, and corners and the areas of the streets. And so finally, Gary had to ask one man in that neighborhood, tell me, why, why all these beautiful flowers? And the man replied, he says, well, do you know Jesus? And the pastor smiled and said, yes. The man smiled back and said, oh, well then, you know why we have flowers. It's the beauty of grace, the beauty of God's presence, the beauty and hope we need to display and show 
in how we live. Friends, can you and I see each day the grace and presence, the truth and goodness of God in these challenging times? Years ago, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. God said, see, I am doing a new thing. And in the book of Revelation, the very end of the Bible, Jesus said it again. He said, see, I am making everything new. Can we see? Help us to see, Lord, in these very challenging times. Times where there are such divisions, labels, terms, mudslinging. Jesus, help each of us as your ambassadors to be thoughtful, to be prayerful, to show and speak your truth and grace. Show us, Lord, as your church, how to be a witness and an example and a demonstration of your peace in how we live and serve. Show us, Lord, how to see clearly and to love dearly and to be ambassadors of your spirit. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. forget I was in fourth grade just a little goober fourth grade and I got my first pair of glasses I will not forget it I remember walking out of that office with my new pair of glasses and there were individual blades of grass there were individual leaves on the trees I just did a good few minutes of this yeah I hope as you leave worship today, you will leave with a vision of grace, a vision of God's Word, God's identity in you through Christ, and the roles we can play in this world as His ambassadors. 
Go in that spirit of Christ. May the blessings of God the Father, the grace of his ever-living Son, Jesus the Christ, and may the power and the peace of God's Holy Spirit be with you and guide you today and every day into eternity. Amen.